Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to this video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. This is actually Josh's last block, final block of the whole series. So he's going to be quilting wiggles and uh, stippling in a slash star. So let's get started. Okay. Uh, I've ditched the star and the uh, interior of the star too. And you can see I knocked out... Actually, you can't see. There yeah. you go. You can see I knocked out a little bit of the, uh, the stippling here. And now I will be moving into this uh, triangle here and doing these wiggly U-shapes. And I should say, Josh's experience with this block is going to be very different from your experience if you piece the block and you quilted it because the piecing is going to be very wonky. This design here is really kind of more of a I guess idealistic version of the block if all the seams match, which they're not going to, don't expect them to. So he's got a little bit of an easier job of it working with the cheater cloth. And that's just, that's been the case with all of these blocks, these last four blocks. Um, but it's still great practice to stitch on the lines. Uh, the piece version just presents those few extra challenges simply because it's so wonky and different. But this is looking really good. How do you like this design so far? Uh, I, I enjoy it. It's, it's fun to quilt it. Uh, I think I find my skill has gotten better that I can really uh, appreciate the, uh, the stitches I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Like the echoes mm -hmm. and the stippling and the wigglies. Okay, awesome. Coming down here, a lot of travel stitching, but uh, Leah gave me a great pointer. When you're travel stitching, go slow. Really slow. Yeah, the slower the better. Yeah, you can even plod along with it. You know, if you really want a, a, a nice visual or kind of a description of how you should quilt it, plod. Like that's, very slow quilting. That's perfect. Yeah, that really sums it up. Yeah, one stitch at a time. Plodding along here. Yeah. See, you can't even tell I was there. And that's exactly what you want. Unless, of course, you, uh, your stitch, you want to really build up the thread. It just depends on the style of quilting that you're doing. Uh, it's good to keep in mind that it's okay to travel stitch. I've had people email me and ask, you know, is it okay to do this? Is it okay to travel stitch as many times as I need to over this area? And the answer is, as long as your thread doesn't break, it's perfectly fine. So now that you're um, stitching this stippling design, and it's on a pretty small scale, how do you feel about it now? I feel a lot better. That's due to the practice I've had on stippling. Uh, the scale, I'm actually... Uh, I enjoy the scale. This is, of the four scales we've done with stippling, I find this the most comfortable. Yeah, this is quarter inch stippling. Uh, it also looks good too. Yeah, it looks really good. It gives you a nice punch of texture, even for a small space. Uh, you know, the bigger the design, the bigger the stippling, um, oftentimes you kind of lose the texture and you don't have as much of an impact on your quilt. So that's looking really, really good. And it's just amazing to me just how much your skill has improved, your ability to not only stay on the line, but also your ability to do this, you know, fairly dense design. That's great. And your travel stitching is just awesome. That's been wonderful to see develop. Thank you. It's been fun to uh, skill up and learn. And now I'm just going to come down here and knock out these wiggly U's. And how I'm going to finish the block, uh, just a logical progression, I'm going to do this, move over to the left and hit the echoes, then travel stitch, hit the echoes, and just hit the other little uh, little bits that I've missed. That makes sense to me. And as always, there's absolutely no right or wrong way to quilt any block. Okay, so that is it. That is Josh's very last block for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. This has been terrific, and thank you so very much for stitching all of these. How have you, how has this experience been for you? Well, it, I remember getting getting started, and I had an impression about free motion quilting, having talk, spoken to quilters over the years at various functions with Leah, and they were so intimidated by it. So I was expecting it to be a lot worse than it was. Granted, though, you need to realize I've never touched a sewing machine other than carrying it, so I came into it totally new. Totally I had new. no idea what I was doing at all. 
Josh often forgets where the presser foot lifter is. Not anymore, but <laughs> Not in the anymore, beginning, but yes. in the beginning he did. I had to <laughs> remind him where it was. Just little things like that. And I think uh, sometimes we approach quilting and, and we, especially if we go to a lot of quilt shows or we uh, go to events and we hear, oh, this, you know, free motion quilting is so hard, so tough. We kind of internalize that and we make it scary and we make it intimidating for ourselves. It also could be that if you're approaching this and you've pieced all of your blocks and you put a lot of effort and time and energy into them and there's that hesitation, that fear of, oh, I don't want to mess anything up. I don't want to waste any of my time. No one likes to waste their time. I certainly don't. I know that you don't either. Um, but I hope that through this entire course, through this entire year, You've been able to see Josh progress as a quilter, the changes that he's made, the confidence he's gained, and especially just those little things, like I was mentioning at the beginning of this video, how his hands grip the block, how much more control he has over it. This is stuff that you can only learn if you get on your machine and do it. You can't learn it from watching someone else. You have to actually have your hands on the fabric and know what it feels like. And we realize, uh... A lot of you are a lot like me. You don't have the time to devote maybe two or three hours a day, but it can definitely be done. Say you only have two hours a week. Uh, I mean, just look at look where I started and uh, my progress now. And I only stitch. What'd you say about? I only quilt about three three hours a week. Would you say? Not, Not even, even that. that. Yeah. I'd say maybe an hour a week. Um, just just to set down and knock out the blocks and you know of course it takes a little longer for Josh to knock a, a block out because we're filming so it might be 15 to 30 minutes but it's just getting on your machine and developing those habits and and building those skills it doesn't take an enormous amount of time but if you don't do it you'll never build it so I really hope that even if you've never joined in for any of these uh, classes that you understand that you can join at any time the cheater cloth is going to remain available, so no matter when you get started, you can jump in and, and try that out, or you can still purchase the Building Blocks Quilt Pattern at leahday.com and learn how to piece and free motion quilt your blocks. So this is always going to be open to you. It's always going to be there as a resource for you to enjoy and learn from. So until next time, let's go quilt. <laughs>